Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is what? Chronicles of Crime Millennium. Ooh, well, we're doing the uh, 1400 Notre Dame version of the game, and there's three on Kickstarter right now. This is the final few days to go ahead and pick it up. If you're interested in picking up Chronicles of Crime Millennium Edition, we have played quite a few of the different variants for the original Chronicles of Crime. It's one of my personal favorite games that has ever been made. I enjoy it that much. And we're going to determine if this one is also going to be in the same flavor of the previous games I have played. Now, this game, if you've never played or have never heard of this game before, plays similarly to like CSI slash Law & Order, if you've ever seen those shows, but in board game form. You're going to be using an application that will tell you Oh, a scene of a crime that you can go ahead and use, whether it be with uh, the AR ability, so you can see exactly what's going on in 3D, or simply to move it around on your tablet, and you'll see the scene of the crime. Usually it takes place in some rural, crazy area in which somebody's committed some dangerous or dastardly deed, uh, whether it be suicide, or unintentional, or intentional, or murder to the... Uh, worst degree and this one here is very very similar to those games as well you're going to be utilizing an application you're going to have some additional content that you may have not seen before and some additional uh, characters that you're going to meet along the way and of course this one specifically is set in the 1400s and then there's two others that are set in different time periods with the use of different mechanics and there are some different mechanics with each of the different versions that we'll talk about in our review right here. Yep, so let's go ahead and take a look down below. So here we have Chronicles of Crime Millennium, 1400 from Notre Dame, or we're in Notre Dame. And uh, we just went ahead and set up what the game would look like, but we're not going to talk about the specific scenario in full detail. We just want to show you the components of the game and kind of how it plays before we discuss our review of the game. Over here are locations, and you're going to get a set of locations, just like you would in the original game, that are going to present you with uh, different places you can be throughout the game. You can go back and forth from the locations back to your home, in which case you're going to have characters that you can utilize, much like in the original game that you got to utilize a forensic psychologist or somebody who had to do with the medical or the coroner. In this one, you're going to have a spy, a merchant, and a monk. But interesting to note, there is one additional sidekick you're going to be getting. You want to talk about that one? Yes, so your handy dog companion can help you uh, when you have physical evidence on your person, and that'll show up here in your in your kind of your bag area. Uh, the dog can you can have your dog sniff the evidence, and it can help you point out to point to different locations or to specific people at that location if the dog has uh, some sort of human scent on that clue. So for instance, if you're in the La Grande Boucherie and you have your dog and maybe the murder weapon and the murderer might be in this location, you can have the dog smell the murder weapon and determine if the murderer has been or is in the area and you'll get some information regarding that. He's a character that basically you can carry along with you, which is nice because normally functions like these three, but he's able to be kind of moving along and helping you on your quest to solve the mystery or the case. There's three different locations on this main board here, and this one over here is where you're going to be getting your main suspects of interest, as well as over here, which is going to be items that you currently don't have, but you know about, and so you can ask questions about those, which is a new aspect of the game, a really nice addition. So you know there's a book, but you don't have the book, and you haven't seen the book, so you want to ask questions about it, then you can go ahead and do so. This is for items you found. When you find an item, for instance, let's go ahead and show you one of them, like food. You you know that somebody ate a poisoned apple. You put this here. You'll ask somebody, and they'll go, oh, here's the apple. Then you can go ahead and move it to this area here. There's also times in which you're going to be looking through the VR or the AR, and you'll be able to take that evidence and place it up here on your board, which you can then use to ask your merchant spy and your monk friend or your dog or people you'll find throughout the game to uh, tell you a little bit about that information if they if you possibly want to. There's also these four cards here. So these are the vision cards. So part of the storyline in this version of the game is that you are a knight with prophetic dreams and these vision cards are the dreams that you had. And what's really cool is that's going to help you as you go throughout the game kind of make connections between people between objects and people and all even location as well as maybe even motive 
you can think of it like you're a psychic detective from the 1400s. And of course, like before, there are going to be specific unique actions, unique objects you'll be using for each of the different scenarios. There is then, of course, the abundance of different things you'll find throughout the game. All of them have QR codes because that's how you're going to utilize the app or with your phone or your tablet, however you want to utilize it. You do have to have the app in order to play this game. So if you don't have that or don't want that, that's probably one instance where you're probably not going to like that. It is truly a hybrid game. This is all the different characters we have just for the prototype. Now, this is a prototype. The actual mm -hmm. game is going to be much better quality. And in fact, you can actually see the quality of what it's going to look like from previous expansions and the base game of the original Chronicles of Crime edition. Uh, this one, of course, will be very, very similar, I imagine. And we can tell from the numbering, too, that we there's going to be a lot more cards. Oh, as yes. Well. There's yes. definitely going to be a lot more cards. And, of course, a bunch of locations and whatnot. Uh, for the main part, the new addition to the game is going to be the dog, the prophetic visions, which are your psychic uh, ability to detect what's going on throughout the different campaign uh, aspects of the game, as well as your new characters here utilizing, and this space here, which is for items that you currently don't have but want to learn about. For the most part, though, you're just going to be going back and forth from location to location, talking to new individuals that you'll find at specific locations. So you're gonna, these guys are going to pop up, and they'll tell you where they're going to go when you get to the locations. Sometimes they'll actually leave or sometimes they'll actually die and sometimes the locations will vanish because maybe they got burned down and you can no longer go to that location anymore so the game interacts with you as you play it based on what you do at the end of the and game based on how much time you take yeah and at the end of the game if you are able to get back home and deduce what happened because your job is not to arrest anybody your job is not to go out and attack or do anything like that your job is to figure out what happened if you can figure out what happened by answering a set amount of questions, you're going to be scored based on how well you did. You're going to get the right to see what actually happened and see how close you were to solving the crime. And then, if you want, go ahead and challenge yourself with another victory another victory or another uh, difficulty, scenario. I should say. <laughs> scenario, yeah. Another scenario with a harder difficulty. If you want, in the game Chronicles of Crime Millennium Edition, so far, so good. Very, very similar to the original with some unique aspects, which we'll talk about right now above. Chronicles of Crime Millennium. This is the similar style game to the original ones, but it is unique. It is in a game on its own, and there's three different versions of it, I believe, on the Kickstarter that you can pick up. I, I really, really like this game. I like the previous versions. I don't think there's any reason why you wouldn't want to pick up this one in comparison to the other ones or in addition to. Maybe just it's just a matter of liking what themes you like, I think, and what kind of kind of murder mystery do you want to play in the 2000s <laughs> you want to play in the 3000s you want to play in the 1400s <laughs> do you want to play as a sleuth a gumshoe from 1860 that's sherlock you holmes you want to have a dog that helps you solve the mysteries <laughs> did you find this one to be any better than the original ones very very similar or something not so good i i liked it a lot um I did get a chance to play it with some newer players who hadn't played the original and who hadn't played a whole lot of different board games. And I think the vision cards, the prophetic dream cards, really helped a lot because it helped us sort of imagine what the story of the scenario was and kind of connect people together. Oh, we saw that here. That's, that's this person. That's this object. That, this must be happening here. Or maybe it's happening like this. They're, maybe they're fighting or maybe one person's running away uh, kind of helped us build the story of what was happening I think that was really helpful especially for some um, beginner players who hadn't played this type of game before with this new additive like aspect of the game with the psychic aspect I think it's really cool I, I like the fact that the more I've seen the additional stuff come out for this game the more I feel like it's more accepting of new newer players not only that but in addition more players because people will want to have something to do and in general in a game like the probably the original I mean I always had fun with it because I was just going through it myself personally I could play on my, on my own I have a really good time with it mm -hmm. but with new things that people can then look at or uh, one person is reading the other person is assessing the mystery aspect yeah, of it you don't want to forget about the cards some people oh, can some people are good at remembering the people <laughs> So you can remember the people and where they are currently. I'm not very good at that. Like, who? what's his face? Where is he at? Mm -hmm. Some people are much better at that. Or other people are like, oh, this happened in this specific vision here. And now we need to go ahead and take a look at it. Oh, that's the guy that was making the book. And I'm just like, oh, okay. I mean, all I know is that I'm, I'm currently going to this place to talk to a dude. But yeah, so I think that's very helpful for this game. I think it, it drives a lot of attention to different types of details for different types of people. So you can have 
six people playing this game and working cooperatively to solve it. And with more people, it, the game does get a little easier because people can choose what they want to utilize, how they want to utilize their memory. But regardless, it doesn't matter. Like playing this game with any number of players is a lot of fun. Uh, I personally think I usually like at least two players so that way one person can read another person can kind of suss the mystery out. But I can see why you want to play it by yourself as well. Yeah, I think, yeah, it might be a little challenging to do by yourself. I mean, I think you could, st you could definitely still play it, but I like how we were able to have the conversation about what was happening and trying to figure it out together out loud. You know, you gotta have your, your Watson with you, right? Yeah. <laughs> the quality of the components is yeah. excellent. Lucky Duck always makes very high quality production uh, components, this especially for their prototypes. Version. Yeah, but it still already looks good and it's gonna look great, we know that. My few, I have a few like things to say about games like this is obviously I don't like a whole lot of microtransactions attached to my games. I probably wouldn't be one to purchase multiple add-on uh, you know, scenarios. app scenarios that yeah. use the same cards. I want to mm -hmm. feel like I'm getting more physical, which is also why I don't play a lot of games like like uh, Magic the Gathering Online, Arena 1, and uh, Hearthstone 1. I like to have the physical aspects, so just give me another game, which they've done. Yeah. One, two, mm -hmm. three, four, six times. So I, I guess I really can't complain, but that would be my one slight negative to the game. However, I have I have actually purchased one of the DLCs to play with new people because I wanted to play something different. And for $5, it's the same, five, maybe $6. Yeah. It's cheaper than going to see a movie. You get more content out of it. You get the same type of story and you get interaction with people. So it so still is worth it. with the download content, you're using your same components just in a different way for a different scenario and a different story, which adds that replayability. And they give you quite a few scenarios in the base yes. as well. They give you, I think like five or six in the original game. And then when yeah, you purchase okay. the expansion, Expansions that actually come with not the DLC, it's the expansions that come with it. You get uh, like what, four or five or something like that, and they have community made ones as well. Oh, I'm fairly certain. Okay. I'm fairly certain. I haven't played any, so don't quote me on that, but I'm fairly <laughs> certain that they do. And uh, maybe they don't. I don't know. Maybe they're thinking of a different game. Maybe. I don't know. Regardless, there's a lot of content where you get. Honestly, if you go through all the content for one of the games, you've made your money's worth and you can go and pick up another one. Which is why this game is so widely successful. It's why it's yes. doing so well on Kickstarter. Why it's not surprising to me. <laughs> and why I think that this game will stand the testament of time. I think this will be a classic game that lasts for a long time. Provided they can move the application from device to device as technology increases. Mm -hmm. uh, it is the best game that attaches itself to technology. It is the best multi-use game that uh, yeah. utilizes AR in a because good way. It would be hard to do this game completely as a board game, uh, and it would be very difficult to do it completely as a video game too. I think the two of them together make it a actual collaborative. They could board game. do this as a board game fully. It would be an. It would be a. It would be a. It would be a, it would be a, <laughs> a choose your own adventure kind of one, and they wouldn't get to use the yeah. un unique aspects of the game, like buildings being lost. And mm -hmm. it would be much more challenging. It makes it a lot but, easier to yes. use the app. Then and I love looking through the that. microphone. Yeah. I love looking through the uh, it's app more to see. immersive and it's quicker that way. So, uh, what did you think overall? Overall, it's great. Like I said, you can even play it with new players. Get started right away. This is a standalone game, so you can just jump right into it, which is great. Still one of my favorite games. Yeah. Uh, the new components are very, very useful, very unique, and bring a little bit of like uh, changes to the game without actually pushing it away from what it originally intended to be and still is a very good multi-platform game that I've always really enjoyed and think you guys will as well. If you're willing to purchase this, which you should, go ahead and hit up the link in the description below. Once again, my seal of approval for this game. Strongly encourage you guys to take a look at it. Chronicles of Crime Millennium Edition. One After I hope to keep it up. like, of course. Oh yeah, you can go ahead and like, subscribe, and comment down below. Here's some link. I'll put something, something somewhere. Here it is. Face. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Yeah. Did you like how I changed it up and didn't say see you guys next time? Yeah, I was waiting for that. Yeah, I switched it up. <laughs> see you in the next video.